Okay, welcome back to the show. And as I always say, for adult minds only, means an open mind, we'll speak about anything that you'd like to speak about. And um, sometimes we get off of politics and we get onto personal relationships. And uh, I'm laughing because there are two women on the phone that have a story that we're going to try and work through and get, get, be able to get it on the air so the FCC doesn't close us down. But uh, we do believe in freedom of speech and freedom of thought. So we have the two Michelles. Hello, girls. How are you? Uh, how are you? I'm good. Uh, thank you for watching the show. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Now, I'm going to lead you through the story you just told me because the way you told it, uh, I would be off the air permanently. So here we go. Uh, the two Michelles are both married, and I'm assuming you girls are under 30? Yes. Married less than uh, four or five years? Yes, yes. Okay, so what you have is uh, two couples, both named Michelle, their husbands, one of their husbands was his birthday. They got the bright idea that for Michelle number one's husband, Number two, Peter. Okay, Michelle number two's husband, uh, they were going to take him out for a nice dinner. And then they were going to go to one of the uh, nude establishments down in Fort Lauderdale. And uh, so you can see how taking your wife to a strip bar and your wife's best friend and her husband may not work out well. Peter, can I interject one thing? Go ahead. I'm sure you're going to. Um, we just thought because it was a higher class, one of the high class establishments that we'd be able to handle it. Yes. Okay. So here's the first mistake. They were thinking, and they're thinking that because <laughs> women are getting naked in a higher class establishment that a husband and wife, newlyweds basically, would have a good shot at having a good time. So here's how the story goes. You go out, you go to a dinner in Fort Lauderdale, correct? Correct. And there was drinking involved, correct? Yeah, just, uh, just a little bit. Okay, just a little bit. I'm sure that means quite a lot. Were you driving and drinking, or did you have... We uh, cabs. We okay. got a hotel and took cabs everywhere. All right, so they got a hotel and they took cabs everywhere. You know they were drunk out of their minds. So we were planning. We thought we had this all planned out perfectly. Yes. Uh, okay, so you got to the restaurant and you had a good time. So that went according to Hoyle, right? Yes. yes. All right. Then after the restaurant, you go to a, 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 a stripper bar, a high-class stripper bar. Very high-class. Very gentleman's high club. A gentleman's club. Okay. That's even higher class yet. And you buy the birthday boy some lap dances. Is that correct? Quite a few lap yeah. dances, yes. Okay. So you feel as wives and friends that you're uh, treating this, uh, what's, what's your husband's name that was his birthday? Okay, you're treating Mike uh, very well. You're getting him as many lap dances as he wants. You're not being a wallflower. You're in there participating and enjoying yourself as much as you can, correct? I realized that I was being very, very good. I didn't care at all. I thought it was really fun. Okay, so you were good with all that. Yes. Now, as the story went, you ladies got up and went to the restroom, correct? That's the story. Okay. And while you were gone... That was the biggest mistake, Peter. Okay, so they left their husbands alone in this gentleman's establishment after they'd been drinking with naked women. Yes. Okay. So you go to the restroom, and while you're in the restroom, husband number one, which his name is... Dan. Dan. Does what? He went and um, decided to, that he wanted to buy Michael, the birthday boy, a very nice, expensive champagne room dance. Okay, now for those of you that don't go to these gentlemen's established room, establishments, the champagne room is a private room where you go with the dancer, the doors are closed, and things can happen. I, I, I know Chris Rock says there's no sex in the champagne room, but as this story evidently unfolds, there is sex in the champagne room. So let me take a wild guess, and Dan was the first person to raise your ire, is that correct? When you got back, found out what he did, uh, Michelle, number one, were you upset with your husband for doing that? Um, no, I thought it was kind of funny at the time. Okay, so Dan's escaped any scrutiny thus far. Absolutely. Okay. Now, how long was he in the champagne room with this uh, young lady? I don't even know. I don't really remember. Half hour? No, I would say about that. Okay, so they've gone a half hour. And when he comes back, is he smiling? He had a grin. Okay, he had a grin. And... What happened in the champagne room that the snide girl... Snide kind of grin. Yeah. <laughs> snide kind of grin. Okay, here we go. Eye. Ear to ear grin. Okay. So what happened, as the story goes, and I'm going to tell it, don't you girls say a word, because you got dirty mouths. Uh, while he was in the champagne room getting his uh, birthday present, 
This was given to him by Michelle Number One's husband. Uh, the young lady exposed his manliness and with her uh, breasts performed a sex act. And um, <laughs> now, the, what's your husband's name, Michelle Number Two? Mike. Mike comes back to the table and is then put through some scrutiny and eventually he comes up with the uh, with the story and now what happens now who gets mad first how does this how does this work because there's there's some there's a level of I, I know Michelle number one is um, wasn't too happy with the fact that that went on there's no doubt about that well this uh, is what happened okay here we go after that I am Michelle number one and Michelle number two we kept the next morning the way we found out is we're like how was the champagne room and he just giggled how was the champagne room giggle giggle harassed him for about a good hour to two hours tell us about the champagne room it was fine she just danced blah 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 just kind of beating around the bush so finally we harassed him enough and he blew mm -hmm. okay so he told you what happened which is what i just explained now where's what's wrong with that where is the problem if michelle number two isn't mad at her husband why are you a little bit upset with what went on? I am just upset because my husband got M Michelle number one, me, mm -hmm. got, we bought him a birthday dance. Right. Nice, clean birthday dance. Right. Did not expect right. for my best friend R right. to have her husband get that done. Yes. Okay, so you feel uh, sort of guilty by association. I feel a bit responsible. A bit responsible. Now, uh, Michelle, number two, are you upset at all that at your friend for um, what happened? I'm just a little frustrated. Okay. Why are you frustrated? Stop making me laugh. I'm just a little frustrated because I didn't know that had went on. I had no idea until the next day. I was a little, I was a little upset with my husband for letting that go on, and I mean. I don't know if they, if Michelle knew what, what goes on in there, if that kind of stuff does go on in there. I can't really, I'm just, I am a little frustrated about the whole situation. Okay, well, that stuff doesn't always go on in the champagne rooms, but a lot of times that it does. And your husband certainly could have said no, although there's, very a, lot few, of drinking very, there's a lot of drinking involved and I don't know any other man would say no. Peter, so can I, I just say this? Go ahead. Michelle's husband is a very attractive man, young man. Um, extremely attractive, and I think that the gr it, I think it was more personal personal for the woman, and not just as much business. Okay, well that that sure doesn't make it any better. So without getting him in more trouble than he already is in, let's <laughs> let's not give him a relationship with this girl. Can we possibly not do that? Okay, here's my summary of the whole thing, and and I'm glad you felt free to call the show with this because. Uh, I get tired of talking about George Bush and sure. John Kerry. Um, the bottom line is, you mentioned drinking many, many, many times in this story, mm -hmm. and you know that that alters judgments. But um, you two sound like a force to be reckoned with. Now it sounds to me like you girls are. Uh, how long have you been friends? About a year. Oh, about a year. Okay. A and, year. Yeah. and you like going out a lot, and sometimes with the husbands, sometimes without the husbands. <laughs> and the idea of going to a bar with naked girls appealed to you? You thought it was kind of titillating a little bit? Yes, we did. We uh, uh, okay, okay. See you under the sun, actually. Yeah. Okay, so you see how boys play rough. You know what I mean? Yeah. When when you go to some place like that and you take your husbands and you're not with them every second, something could happen. Obviously, it did happen. I'm sure you're mature enough not to let it uh, ruin your relationship between the two of you girls or ruin the relationship between uh, any of your husbands and uh, you know I think that the thing that you need to pay attention to is I can sense the um, the impishness between you two girls I can sense the uh, um, the fact that you girls want to go out and light the town up so when you go out with your husbands just use a little more common sense stay out of those stripper bars and as a matter of fact, just stay home and behave yourselves a little bit. Don't You don't have to go out and get drunk and in a cab and all that kind of stuff time and time again, and I'm sure you don't. But to take your husband to a stripper bar for his birthday and then to hold that against him is tough. Well, it's a tough call. 
So I'm sure everything's going to be fine. You guys keep watching, and thanks for calling the show. Thank you. All right, bye. Be good. Bye. Bye. We've had a number of calls that were nothing more than vicious attacks on our president, George Bush. And uh, one in particular was followed up by a pro-Bush call, as most of them are. Overwhelmingly, most of the calls that come in are in support of the president and in support of Iraq. I do not screen any of my calls. Whatever you people call and talk about, that's what goes on the air. The interesting thing about these two uh, uh, people is they ended up being brother and sister. Now, we're going to start off with the sister. She's, uh, to bring you into the call, we're talking about seeing the movie Fahrenheit 911, and she's talking about George Bush and uh, him sitting in the classroom, and I think she says he looks like a monkey. Hang on one second. We're going to go to that clip. The movie starts off with uh, George Bush sitting in a classroom, and he knows before he goes into the classroom that uh, the first plane has hit the tower. He knows other planes have been uh, making U-turns and diverted. But it seems that there is a lot of controversy about the fact that he's sitting in the classroom, and even after the second plane hits, he remains there for a few minutes. I think the families of those people in the planes and those people in the tower may have had some feelings also. He's a nincompoop. Okay. He knew 20 minutes before he went in that classroom that one of the towers were hit. They also knew that planes were turning around and doing new turns and gyrations in the air. He is the commander-in-chief. He is the one, God help us, that has to give the orders. And he sat there like the monkey that he is. There should be such an uprising. Every street should crowded with people. It should look like the scene in Frankenstein when they're going after the, the when they're going after the monster. It's just I've had it, I've had it, I've had it. Well you've had it, you've had it, and you've had it, and now we've had it. Next caller. All right, well after that call, let's uh let's see if we can find a Bush supporter. Ed and Del Rey, go ahead. That woman is nuts and dangerous. George W. Bush is the greatest president since Ronald Reagan. Ed is there anything about Bush that you don't like? Nothing. I think he's on the right track. Absolutely, positively on the right track. This country is, is at war, and he's leaving us on the way out. Do you think that going into Iraq was a good move, Ed? Absolutely. We got rid of a tyrant. We put pressure on Iran, which is going to implode by its young people. We're right next to Syria, which is a danger to everybody. And I think we can show the Muslim world, the Arab world, that there's a way to freedom.